So we're in our second day of class um, for Intro to Programming using Bootstrap World. Let's remember what we did last time. So last time we talked about um, that's not necessarily a, this class isn't about becoming a programmer, uh, but it's learning to think in a certain way. So we'll solve problems in a certain way, look at the world in a certain way, communicate in a certain way. And along the way, we will learn uh, more about algebra. So this will fit into your algebra class. And you're designing a game based on the ninja cat format that we looked at last time. And we also learned about the coordinate axis and how that can be used to model a computer screen. So we talked about modeling and how um, we use models in our minds the way God made us was to use models to not have to think about um, everything in the real world the way it is all the time. But we use models. And um, so in this, this game, you're going to use a coordinate axis to model a computer screen, and in the coordinate axis, um, there's an X coordinate and a Y coordinate that goes up and down. And in, in our model, the lower left is going to be 0, 0, the lower left of our screen. The top right is going to be 640, so that means it's going to go along the X axis for 640 pixels, and then up the Y axis. 480 pixels. So that's what our screen, that's going to be the model of our screen. And using that, using the X coordinate and the Y coordinate, we can give the position of any sprite that we want to on the screen. So, order of operations. So you can think of math as a language, just like a computer language, or just like English or Spanish or Japanese or another language. And we use nouns to describe objects, and you've learned about that kind of stuff. Um, well, math can describe objects too. So we call those values, and the values could be numbers like 11 or 23, 2 or 33 to describe some kind of quantity, right? So we could talk about 11 things or 22 apples or 33 coins. We also use in our in our human languages um, verbs like throw, run, build, jump to describe operations on the nouns. In math, we use something called functions, and you know several functions. You know addition, you know subtraction, you know multiplication, you know division, and those are just operations that are going to be performed on numbers. So just like you can slice a piece of bread. Right? So you can perform an operation called slice on a noun called a piece of bread. You can also add four and five. And so instead of verbs and um, nouns, we're going to call those, I'm going to perform an operation or I'll perform a function on a number or on more than one number. In this case, add takes two values, four and five. So a mathematical expression is like a sentence. It's an instruction for doing something. So the expression 4 plus 5 tells us to add 4 and 5. To evaluate an expression, we follow the instructions in the expression. So 4 and 5, I'm going to fix this mistake here. So the expression 4 plus 5 evaluates to 9. So that's, what we're, that's the word we're going to use to um, apply the operation plus to the values 4 and 5, the function plus to the, to the values 4 and 5. We'll say it evaluates to 9. So uh, in your uh, video notebook, under the uh, week 1, Part 1b section, if you don't already have that open. Um, just write down the what these evaluate to. 8 times 4. Remember, we'll use the asterisk for, for times in the computer. 20 minus 6 and 16 minus 20. So um, type those into your video notebook. 
So pause here and do that. Okay. Sometimes we need multiple expressions to accomplish a task, right? So you might have multiple steps, like in making a sandwich. You know all of the steps that you need to do to make your favorite sandwich. So we can do the same thing in math sentences. Somebody might say 4 plus 2 minus 1. Um, and in math sentences, it's hard to tell um, what order you're supposed to do things in. So they could mean we do 4 plus 2 first and then subtract 1. Or they could mean we're going to do 2 minus 1 first and then add the result of that to 4. So um, in your video notebook, stop for a second and write an expression of your own that could mean several different things. Okay? So depending on the way we read an expression, you could get different results. That's a problem because we use math to share calculations between people. So when we get your cell phone bill every month, um, we agree up front on what things are going to cost. So we, they use math, and I have to rely on the fact that they're using the same math that I expect. Uh, if they got different results, then that would mean our bill would be wrong. So we can avoid problems by agreeing on the order that we're going to do things. So um, we'll agree on an order and then add detail to expressions to indicate the order. So we'll do something, um, we'll use some kind of punctuation, just like we do in sentences, to make things clearer. So stop for a second and in your video notebook, um, type in one reason why it's important to have rules about the order of operations. Okay? So mathematicians didn't always agree on the order of operations. So it, it, it took a while for everybody to agree, but now we do have a common set of rules. And the pyramid on the right, which is actually down here, this pyramid here, um, is a way that you, that you already know about which order to go in. So the higher up are the ones that you do first. So you know that you do multiplication and division first, if there's no parentheses, and then you do addition and subtraction last. Um, so you only do, you, know, add, you do all of the multiplication and all of the division before you do any of the addition or subtraction. And then um, in, at one level, it actually doesn't matter what order you do them in. So um, 4 plus 2 minus 1 that we used as an example before, it really doesn't matter whether we say that's 6 minus 1, which is 5, or we can look at it as 4 plus 1. Right, so I can do the 2 minus 1 first and get 1 and say that's 4 plus 1. Same, same thing if I'm at the same level of the pyramid. Um, and so we call that applying the operations. So now in your video notebook, stop and look at this long expression for a second, and then pick which one of these uh, is going to be the, the correct order to apply these in. Okay, so we're going to talk about a way that we can, can use, and, and um, the examples will be simple at first. But then as we get into programming, you'll see um, how useful these concepts are. So we can draw a diagram that talks about the, the order of evaluation, and that's called a circle of evaluation. So it's a circle, and it's going to help us figure out how we're going to, uh, what order we're going to use to evaluate an expression. So here is an expression for 4 minus 5. So minus is going to be the operation, and we're going to say we're going to say four minus five. So the circle evaluation shows the structure that's going on inside the expression, and here's the two rules: every circle must have one function which goes at the top of the circle. Rule two: the numbers are written below in order 
from left to right. So pause the video for a second and figure out which rule of this rules above uh, does this circle on the right, which rules does it break? So now, um, just on a, uh, your, uh, a piece of paper, um, draw the circles of evaluation for each of these four expressions. So stop right now and draw out these four circles of evaluation on a piece of paper. Okay, so every circle of evaluation evaluates, remember we talked about what evaluate meant, to the result of its corresponding expression. So the, this circle, which has the operation minus, starts with 4 and 5, so it's going to be 4 minus 5 is going to evaluate to negative 1. So this circle is going to evaluate to negative 1 because I take the operation minus and apply it to 4 and 5. So that's 4 minus 5 is a negative 1. So the, the, the one good thing about circles of evaluation is we can um, combine them to do more and more complicated expressions. So before you wrote a circle of evaluation for 351 and negative 1. Sorry, that's 351 divided by negative 1. So you, you did that on a previous exercise. Um, and we also saw earlier that 4 minus 5, the circle for 4 minus 5 evaluates to negative 1. So now, if we want to make something, make it this more complicated example, then we can actually just put in our smaller circle of evaluation for minus 4, 5 into this bigger one that's divided by 351 minus 1. Does that change anything about your circle for 351 divided by minus 1? No, it's the same thing. This circle, if it means minus 1, then any place we have minus 1, we can replace with this circle. So um, take a minute and you're in a piece of paper, copy down this circle, and then fill it in with the rest of this expression here. That's got two parts, and you can see how those match up to the two inside circles. And it's got an overall operation of times. So go ahead and fill in the rest of this circle of evaluation. All right, let's look at another example. What does this circle of evaluation evaluate to? So let's, let's review how to evaluate a circle. All right, we know we're multiplying because that's the function at the top of the circle. The number 6, sorry, I need to fix that. The number 6 is the first number in the multiplication, right, because it's on the left-hand side. To get the second number of, uh, in the multiplication, we have to evaluate the circle on the inside. So we pause for a second and evaluate that. So inside, it's an addition of 4 and 5. So the inside evaluates to 9. So the whole thing evaluates to 6 times 9, which is 54. So this circle evaluates to 54. All right, now let's practice going backwards into traditional notation, which we call an arithmetic expression. So take this circle and write out the expression that's represented by this circle. So pause for a second and do that on a piece of paper. Okay, all right now. Here's some matching, and you can do this either on a piece of paper or in your notebook. Uh, but match these circles of evaluation on the right with the corresponding arithmetic expression. Arithmetic expression. So you just write down, you know, the number and the letter. You don't have to draw all of these, but 
this expression 9 times 4 minus 3 matches up to one of these. So use those steps, and you can go back a, go back in the video if you don't remember the steps, but use those steps to figure out which of these circles go with which of these expressions, and then write those down in, uh, either on a piece of paper, or you can type them into your video notebook. Okay, so that's about it for today. Um, but before we, before you finish for today, um, go back to your game brainstorming page in your uh, workbook and make sure that you have all your characters identified. See if there's anything that you want to change, any more details you want to add. Um, and then go ahead and start thinking about different ways that we can model your game. So just think about what the coordinate system is going to look like and uh, different ways that we can model your game and how your game is a model of the world and we can talk about that and then um, we'll work on it um, in some of our next class.